Renault was one of the EV pioneers with the Zoe, but it's rested on its laurels a little bit since then. That is really until now. And that's a good thing because even though the Zoe has improved over the years, it has started to be eclipsed by other EVs that are rapidly coming on the market. But this Megane E-Tech comes on a completely original EV platform. But is that enough to put Renault back on the map? But before we get into the detail, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And if you want even more detail, read our review under this video. What do I think about this Megane E-Tech? Well, it's all subjective, isn't it? One man's meat is another man's poison when it comes to looks. I happen to like it. This colour is a little bit fashionable, so it does tend to look a little bit like the Nissan Qashqai and various other cars of this shape. And talking of the shape, it's, it's kind of coupe-ish, but it's also hatchback-ish. Officially, it's a crossover. It reminds me of the Volvo C40 from the front. It's got the kind of stance of a Range Rover Velar for some reason. I don't know whether you would agree with that or not. The wheels look great. They fill the arches. This here, this cladding, if you will, breaks up this colour very nicely. LED lights, front and back, look great. And of course, you can't help but notice, there you go, the new Renault logo there, redesigned. Yeah, I do like this, especially in this sort of bitone colour here. And uh, here, of course, you have the main bit there for when you want to charge your car up. But this down here, this air vent here is meant to increase the flow. I like the car. Yeah, I do. I think it's got legs, as they would say. The Megane E-Tech is based on the CMF EV platform, the same one that uh, the Nissan Aurea is built on. But these two vehicles, they really couldn't be more different. Trim-wise, you get Equilibre, Techno and a range topping launch edition. Each of these models benefits from Renault's 60 kilowatt hour battery for a WLTP certified range of up to 280 miles on a single charge. At launch, all Megane e techs will come with a 220 horsepower motor. There is a 40 kilowatt hour battery and a 130 horsepower motor, but these aren't thought to be coming to the United Kingdom. In the UK, it's going to be a simple buying or leasing process for you because Renault's decided there are not going to be any options or extra packs at all with this Megane E-Tech. When it comes to wheel size, you can expect 18-inch alloys on the basic model. The others, like you can see here, come with 20-inch rims. And you know what? Accessing the Megane E-Tech is a pretty simple process because it recognises you have the key in your pocket or handbag or wherever you want to keep your key, and it opens up for you. So let's have a look inside. Believe it or not, what you're looking at here are recycled bottle tops. Yes, that's what Renault has made a lot of the seat material from. These seats are also half electric and half mechanical. Well, like many cars, it's not rocket science to get comfortable, especially in this very nice brand new Megane E-Tech. It's got reach and rake adjustable steering, makes life easy. You've got a really obvious wireless phone charger here. It's pretty easy to use. Got cup holders, two of them, and you can even uh, take that out if you only want one cup holder. Now this is very handy if you're on a motorway trip. Obviously you can rest your arm on it, even though you're meant to have two hands on the steering wheel, you can still look just about rest your elbow on it. At the same time, it's a little bit too thick because if you're driving sort of down here, maneuvering around in town, I well, I found anyway, my elbow kept banging into it. Anyway, it's deep so you can look, this, this will go into there very nicely. So that's very handy and practical. Some loose change and what have you can be kept in here. You've also got two USB slots as well. Glove box here. It's uh, not a massive one, but it's clearly big enough to keep a notebook and a can of drink. I love the way the instrumentation is uh, sort of angled towards you. This panel is quite pleasing to the eye if you're into panels. Not so convinced about this material here though. It reminds me of my old geography teacher's cardigan, but I really shouldn't complain too much because a lot of the material in this car is sustainable. So a nice little touch to get into the back. You've got the handle here. Let's see. Well, the standard test is your height. Now I'm five foot 11, six foot in heels. Look at that, I've still got a bit of space between my bonce and the headliner. 
I've been sitting in the driver's seats and I've still got this amount of room between my knees and the seat back. Uh, so that's fine. Um, I wouldn't want three people sitting in the back here, but another person sitting here would be fine for a long journey. A couple of hours and this would be absolutely okay. So look at all this headroom here and these lovely little lights as well. Yeah, it's good. There's no middle armrest here. I thought there was for a moment, but there isn't. You could get a child sitting here, but so uh, there's no way you could get three fully grown adults. Well, there is a way, but you'd be very, very uncomfortable. However, you do get two air vents here to keep you cool or warm and two USB sockets down here. And you've got these pockets in the back of the seats. So you can keep your copy of, I don't know, Tintin or Asterix in there or whatever it is your kids read these days. And no car these days can do without these Isofix points to put a child seat in nice and securely. You also get Isofix points in the front seat as well. It's a bit like the Krypton factor opening the boot. The old days you used to put a key in or whatever and press something to open the tailgate. But then you could kick, couldn't you, under lots of cars and that would happen. Clearly not with the Megane E-Tech. In fact, I thought here, but no, this tiny thing here. Oh, we're in. There you go. We're in. Um, well, it's deep. You've got your charging cable under there. Get a couple of, well, flight cases, I reckon. 440 litres, I believe. And this space under here adds 32 litres to the capacity. And cargo capacity expands to 1332, if I could actually get this parcel shelf off. But anyway, you've got a control here. You've got the split seats. And this just pops out as so. Probably you could do it a lot more elegantly than I could, but that gives you a very good idea of what kind of stuff you can get in there. Probably stuff to the tip or a washing machine maybe. So on the practical front, you've got 60-40 split folding seats. You have got a rather high lip here and it's not a flat floor. It's a really noticeable ridge. There's a practical amount of space then, but not such a practical shape of boot. Launch editions have a range of 280 WLTP miles. In some regions, they give you a range of charging options, but in the UK, Renault is giving you just one. However, it is the top one, and that's 22 kilowatts AC and 130 DC. So you get a standard CCS charging port. So a standard 7 kilowatt charge will take you 9 hours and 15 minutes. 22 kilowatts AC will take you 3 hours 15 minutes to get to 100%. Uh, but if you want to go for 130 kilowatt DC, you're looking at 1 hour and 15 minutes to hit 80%. So going by WLTP, you're getting 4.7 miles per kilowatt hour, which is pretty frugal. This steering wheel, as you can see, it's kind of not really 100% round and Renault has, well, clearly again done this deliberately, but it's apparently to remind us of Renault's F1 heritage. Seems a little daft, does it, maybe, in a Megan EV? But anyway, that's still nice to look at. It's really easy to operate the steering wheel. You've got the multi-sense button here and you can change the driving modes from comfort to eco to sport to personal. Uh, you've got all sorts of things here. You can view, for instance, the different screens from the sat nav all the way through to seeing the distance, how many miles you've got left on the range and uh, how much charge you have in your battery. Easy here, windscreen wipers, you've got the selector here from park, reverse, neutral and drive. Um, and you've got the lights here. And it's really, really quite simple to use. Cruise control, speed limiters on the left. This is a 12.3 inch screen on the driver's dashboard. So if you hit the view button, you can see it's really, really clear actually. You've got the Google Maps come up. You've got the distance. You've got your charge remaining and you have here shows you if the door's open or not handy if you've got kids in the back you've got really discreet easy to use controls for the air conditioning here they're not all buried in the screen speaking of this screen it's a 12 inch media display 
You might find this map rather familiar, and that's because it's provided by Google. You also get Google Assistant and Google Apps. So you've got the Google Assistant here. You can just press that and say, hey Google, find the local post office. And it'll respond. I understood, find the local post office. Is that right? Yes. And then of course you've got to try and shut her up, but then she's now hearing me say that. But anyway, you've got all this, you've got uh, the map here showing you how far obviously you've got to go to work or home or whatever. Underneath you've even got heated seats, got the air conditioning telling you if it's on or off, heated steering wheel, volume controls here, but also you've got the volume controls on the steering wheel. Um, it's the radio here, you've got your iPhone or Android, whichever one you use, sat here. And of course you can listen to music, telephone, all sorts of things here. Use a manual even if you need to know more about the Megan E-Tech. And then you've got the uh, air quality, parking assistance, driving assistance. And you can configure pretty much to your heart's content really how this all looks. You've even got ambient lighting. You can adjust the palette and the light intensity. You've got the Play Store here. Accept. All these apps you see, featured apps for Renault. The performance of this Renault Megane E-Tech is really only average when it comes to EVs. That said, 0-62 in 7.5 seconds is still really quite impressive, but 220 horsepower and 300 newton meters of torque is still very decent. But if Renault does take the option of bringing the less powerful model to the United Kingdom, then it's going to take 10 seconds to get to 62 miles an hour. And that will be a bitter pill to swallow, I think. Clearly, we're on a bumpy road here, but still you can have fun in this Renault Megane. The steering feels really quite responsive. The car is smaller than I expected, so it's not a hot hatch, but you feel you're not in something that's vast and cumbersome, it's agile. The last electric vehicle I drove was the MG4, and the 0-62 figures are very similar. That has the edge in terms of drivability, but this has the edge in terms of quality, I think, in the cabin. However, the MG4 is rear-wheel drive, and this is front-wheel drive, and rear-wheel drive does have the edge, really, when it comes to drivability. So I've been driving this car now for about half an hour, mainly across A and B roads. Uh, I am looking for a motorway. I'm sure I'll find one. I don't know what I'd be like at the end of two hours driving this. I think I'd be pretty comfortable. I think it's the sort of car that is relaxing to drive. I've been in sport mode a lot of the time, and um, purely because I, I just like the quick burst of acceleration um, that you get from all EVs. This. But I don't think I'd be coming out of this car feeling absolutely knackered after a two hour journey. Because of the compact size of this Renault Megane E-Tech, driving around town is absolutely a piece of cake. Um, we've got a horse coming up here, a horse in town, so I shall be uh, the one horse town, you get it? But the good thing is we're in an electric vehicle and I don't think it scared that horse. That's quite good. This Megane's really good when it comes to driving around town. It's just uh, so compact, the steering is direct, and uh, it's just easy to park and easy to get around the narrow streets and sort of overtake horses and things like that. So yeah, a great car for shopping or doing the school run in as well as, well as doing a commute. And when it comes to safety, Renault needn't worry too much anymore. There was that slight little dip where the Zoe only got zero stars, but this has got the full five star safety rating from Euro NCAP. So that's a real big tick in the book for Renault and a lot of families will be encouraged to hear how safe this new Renault Megane E-Tech is. And that's backed up by no less than 22 ADAS features. That includes lane departure warning and lane keeping assist, 
There's also an emergency lane keep assist and that effectively keeps you in your lane more safely. So it detects pedestrians and cyclists. Its auto emergency braking extends to reversing as well as traveling forwards. Even when you're getting out of the car, it'll warn you if something's coming along alongside you so you don't get your leg chopped off or whatever. You've also got a parking camera with a 3D top-down view. So plenty of modern safety tech is included as standard. The only real fly in the ointment with the Megane e-tech is that the starting price is £36,000. And that goes up to £38,500 for the middle grade. And if you want the top of the range launch edition, then you'll have to have very deep pockets indeed because that will cost you £40,000. So with the new MG4 starting at around £26,000, this Renault Megane E-Tech is starting to look a bit like a premium option. The great thing about this Megane is that it's got a really good reversing camera. It's a good job because the rear windscreen is very, very narrow. The question is then, will Renault win itself back a leading place in the electric vehicle market as it did with the Zoe. I don't know, when it comes to this, the uh, Renault Megane E-Tech, it's not remarkable when it comes to range, it's not remarkable when it comes to space, but it is quite remarkable when it comes to looks and it's entertaining to drive. So yes, I think Renault is going to be a winner and will end up selling and leasing a lot of these. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe.